Welcome back. Well, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, this year marking 40 years of progress in detection and treatment. Since 1985, the American Cancer Society reports more than 517,000 lives have been saved thanks to better treatment and proactive screening. While the rates, diagnoses are increasing, death rates are actually declining, while the five-year survival rate is rising. Joining me now is the Chief of Breast Surgery for the Mount Sinai Health System and the Director of the Dubin Breast Center, Dr. Elisa Port. Dr. Port, it's great to see you. Thank you. Always, Maria. Thank you so much for being here. And we always want to talk to you about what's going on, the latest in terms of breast cancer. How would you assess the backdrop today? I think, um, you know, my the main word I like to use is optimism. I think the curates have never been better because of, as you pointed out, better options for early detection. And also, with every single year, we have more options for treatment. I think a really interesting fact is we know now in the last decade, the treatment options for breast cancer combined are the total of the three decades prior. Wow. So the number of inventions, the number of things we have to offer for people for treatment is really exploded. And that really, those, those options save lives. And you've talked so much about technology mm -hmm. and how you're using technology sure. differently. UCLA is leading a $16 million multinational yes. uh, institutional clinical trial to evaluate yes. whether artificial intelligence can help support radiologists in interpreting mammograms more accurately. What do you think about AI? How could mm -hmm. AI reshape breast cancer screenings and guidelines for the future? Dr. Yes. Port. So it's already happening. Um, just to give you an idea, this trial is super important. I'll talk about that in a minute. But to give you an idea, at Mount Sinai right now in our health system, every single mammogram is double read by a radiologist and by AI. Wow. Okay, the importance of this trial, so it's already here and people are already using it. And what they're using it for is to try and figure out is A, if we can pick up more cancers, but also what's super important about mammograms is what we call the callback rate or false positives. There are a lot of women who don't go for their mammograms because they're so fearful of getting called back and the anxiety and all of those things. What's really important to know, I think, is if you get called back in for your mammogram because they think they, f they found something, 80 to 90% of the time, those things will be nothing, and they'll say, congratulations, it was a false alarm. So AI can help with that, too. What's really exciting about this study, even though AI is already being used, is it's a randomized study. So it's really going to zero in on what the exact added value of AI is above a radiologist reading. Not in lieu of. Um, might that day come? Absolutely. But for now, it's really in addition to the radiologist. Have you figured out where and how breast cancer comes from and mm -hmm. why it inflicts so, so many people? I mean, sure. is it, you know, the way we live and mm -hmm. our, you know, the, the way we eat and our diet and exercise? Is it genetics? Mm -hmm. What specifically do you attribute yeah. this to? I mean, I think what we need to know is that there are different factors that affect breast cancer and breast cancer risk. Some, I always say, some we can control and some we can't. Okay, genetics, we can't control our genetics. And for sure, there's about 10 to 15% of breast cancers that are related to genetic predisposing factors we have. The BRCA genes, there's other genes that we've identified. And if you have a mutation in one of those genes, you definitely have one of the highest possible risks of getting breast cancer. So getting screened for those genes is really important. But there are other factors we can control things like um, weight, things like alcohol intake. Those things also influence an increased risk of getting breast cancer. Yes, very important. Yes. Now, what is your guidance on mammograms? Because mm -hmm. we're all in mourning here at Mornings with Maria because we lost a dear friend and a mm -hmm. producer. Yes. She died at the young age of 29. Yes. Emmy Rempel, we love you so much, Emmy. Rest in peace. And she didn't know to get a mammogram yes. in her 20s. Of and course. all of a sudden, and she came on so many shoots with me. Uh, we were there in Texas together, Emmy and me, and, and, and we send our love to her family. She left us way too soon. But who mm -hmm. told her to get mm -hmm. a, a mammogram? Nobody. She was 29. There right. she is with me when we went to the lab in Texas where they mm -hmm. were taking people's guns from illegals who were coming across mm -hmm. the border with these guns. She was a hard worker and a wonderful friend. Yeah. 
such a tragedy for sure. There's there's nothing I can say to, you know, to alleviate that pain. And for sure, Maria, there are way too many deaths related to breast cancer now, still, even as well as we're doing. So would you the, tell young people to get a mammogram? I, what we're saying really is know your risk. You know, the details of Emmy's case, I don't really know, but um, what we say is start at age 40 if you have no other risk factors and do it every year. Remember, the guidelines from the United States Prevention Service Task Force are saying doing it every other year, which we feel is totally inadequate because one of the reasons why we want to start mammograms young and younger is because young women get more aggressive breast cancer, oh. okay? The problem is, is why tell young women to get screened, but then tell them to do it every other year, right? It makes no sense. There's right. so much that can happen in a two-year interval. So our recommendations are starting at age 40 every year. However, there are exceptions to that rule, and that is that we do start people younger if they have family histories or other predisposing factors. If my mother has breast cancer, had breast cancer at 48, we tell women to start their screening 10 years earlier mm -hmm. than when she was diagnosed. So that can help pick out people who are at higher risk and catch it earlier if, if God forbid, cancer develops. Elisa, you are doing God's work. Mm -hmm. We so thank you for your incredible work. How many surgeries would you say you do a week? How many, how many, how many tumors do you take out, do you think, every um, week? I say I do between five and ten operations a week, probably about three to four hundred a year. Unbelievable. Yeah. Godspeed. It's my Thank happy you. place. Thank you so much for the Thank work you. you're doing. Thank Dr. You. Elisa Port joining us. Thank you. Good to see you. We'll be right back.